Hi, I'm Megan Holiday here at the world famous K Rock here with Hosier. Hey. Hi, how How's are it going? you? Yeah, very good. Good, good. So it's good, good to see you. You're a lot taller than I thought you would be. I know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. have a good I'm foot. actually two people. You are. Aren't I'm two you? people in one. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm glad that you're here today. Um, we've been playing your new song, Better Love, which. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, so it's going to be on the new um, Tarzan soundtrack. Yes, yeah. So how does that work when um, they like approach you to do a song for a film? Mm hmm. Um, I, you know, it's it's the first time that I've that I've written for film, so it was it's it's all kind of new to me. But they reached out and and uh, we're talking about you know a contemporary song for for the film. It was the last time I was in uh, in LA, which was a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and uh, it, you know they showed us like an early edit and and you know the director is a guy called David Yates. He's fantastic and really great to work with. Uh, Rupert Gregson Williams kind of composed the score, and they they showed me an early edit of the film. And okay, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, like if yeah, yeah. you get like a little bit of a storyline so that you can write accordingly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I, I got to see an early edit, and then and then we kind of discussed it, and but it, it was like you know the deadline is three or four weeks away. So like oh if if the, so to have the song completed, it's like four weeks or something. So you know mixed and mastered. That's intense. So it's a challenge, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I kind of I think I w I had just come off tour and and I hadn't written and gone into studio for about two years two and a half years and so i was eager for a challenge like that and i think i said if i can have a demo in five days we have a song and if yeah. not we're no. well i love it it's like got a really rich like full sound to it thank you kind of sultry it's very nice thank you very like much that's so. that's that's exactly how i would describe myself really sultry yeah, very sultry yeah Sul <laughs> got a sultry look going on thank you mm -hmm, very much mm -hmm. thank you and um so like you've been saying for the last um you know little while that you wanted to take a break yeah. you know and yeah. then uh here you are back again yeah. having to make a song in three weeks yeah so when are you actually taking a break Ta taking a break <laughs> well we don't use the b word anymore um, <laughs> uh, but i think um no so soon in, in about two weeks so i think this you know i'll be talking about the song a little bit here and uh before the premiere and, and in london uh but I'm, I'm eager to kind of fall off the map and you know when this kind of call came through that's i was just in the process of doing that i've literally i was a few days into you know everything being finished um so yeah i mean i'm, I'm eager to i mean i've never been more kind of charged and more excited for writing new music yeah so totally i can't wait to. Get so have you that. been writing at all on the road or do you plan to do that while you're on your break i kind of it's it's difficult i found on the road you're you're in the pockets of 14 other you know 15 other people all yeah. the time and you're all go and you're you're all having to you know you're all externalizing everything you're having to kind of just like but for me writing is a very it's a quiet thing you do it on your own and uh so I have a huge amount of ideas, you know, that you would be writing down the whole time, but it's actually, it's turning those ideas into, into songs is the, is the next step. Absolutely. So do you, how do you think this next record is going to be different than your self-titled? Um, I don't know. I, to, to be honest, be, because I listen to a lot of different styles of music and I enjoy a lot of different styles, I think the output reflects that sometimes. And so I'm still, I'm kind of figuring out right now at the moment, you know, which you know, how the album will sound. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to comment or I can't comment, you yeah. know. Uh, but I think, you know, I think I'll, I think I'll, I mean, I'm, it'll certainly be a, it'll be a, a, a step, a step onwards, I'd say, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure exactly how I can comment on that, but uh, I'm excited, you know, it'll, it'll still have the, it'll still have the spirit. Um, you know, it'll, it'll definitely be coming from me, but it might, I might explore a different sound. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing it. Um, so something we did for this Facebook Live interview is we asked people to tweet at KROCK and ask you questions specifically. Joy. So Let's do it. I've got some fan questions for you. Yep. Okay. Um, this person is on a one, like a first name basis with you. Oh, really? Yes. So this is Khaleesi61, Andrew. Why do you wear so many layers of clothes? I see you. I see only. Am I so you're not even that layered. Two up. layers. Two layers. Two layers. Yeah, I've got two layers on too. Yeah. So. If I, and if I was to say that to you, Khaleesi, you'd be like, <laughs> "What?" Yeah. Seriously. You know, you know there'd be there'd be fingers yeah. wagged and fingers pointed. There would be. Yeah. Um. Okay. Next question. <laughs> okay. Uh, seriously, Hosier asks most rebellious thing you've ever done as a teenager. I love this question. Uh, most rebellious <laughs> thing I've ever done as a teenager. I. Not to incriminate myself, 
but the statute limit of t- limitations probably s- s- passed at this yeah, stage. Yeah, you're probably okay. Um, <laughs> no, I never. I was a fairly well-behaved lad. Like I think, um, you know, so, like I didn't. I wasn't going around robbing things or breaking windows. So I, I remember. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think. I remember one fantastic evening down in British Bay, which is this beach uh, in Wicklow, and loads of friends had just. I think loads of friends had loads of teenagers from loads of different schools had descended upon this kind of rave and somebody, you know, lit the place up with some quad bike headlights. Somebody brought down some system and we were young and this this was a real gathering of, of people and we kind of found ourselves stranded in uh, in British Bay, not to put ideas in anyone's head, <laughs> back home. Um, it's a beautiful kind of sandy beach and for whatever reason this 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 thing kind of kicked off and of course trouble was gonna was gonna happen and i think the i think the police kind of rolled up at one point and everyone just had to sprint okay. and there was no roads there was no so you're on just on a beachhead with kind of cliffs and so we just hopped we just garden hopped all the way kind of jumping <laughs> from and these are real summer homes so like jumping into somebody's boat oh God. parked in their house over the fence into somebody else's garden onto their cars and um, How it, old were was, you? I don't know. I actually, maybe, f- were we even drinking at that stage? <laughs> maybe 15, 16, something yeah. like that. Um, I was a fairly well-behaved kid, but I remember that it was being a kind of a, a fun, exciting thing. And then I don't know how we got, I don't know how. You got out of that. Yeah, yeah. It's a fa- I, should, I should ask. I should Just get remember it going friends. down. I remember that being a fun <laughs> night. I remember that being a fun, like, you know yes it was fairly harmless though absolutely yeah. okay okay very cool um okay if you could have an hour-long conversation with anyone of your choice gone or alive who would it be and why um hour-long conversation with somebody gone or alive um there's a huge amount of of musicians that that i love who uh, who i kind of grew up on who were you know passed away i think you know nina simone i've always oh, yeah. admired hugely and She's such a fiery character. Um, so I, I think, you know, for better or worse, I think I'd, I'd love to sit down and talk to her. And just even to discuss what her music means to people nowadays. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Did uh, you watch that documentary that they have yeah, on Netflix? Yeah, what, what Happened Missing Moon. So yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. I it's had so no sad. idea about her life story. Yeah, it's, it was, yeah, it's really tough. But like somebody like that, like somebody like Nina Simone or even like singers like Billie Holiday or, you know, I, 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 there's a lot of people that you'd love to, you'd love to show what their work means to the world long after they're gone so mm-hmm. it'd be nice to have a conversation with somebody like that yeah, yeah absolutely i like your style um what's an aspect of fame that you'll never get used to um i don't yeah like fame is fame is a weird word it's a it's a it's a you don't you never really feel you know you never really feel fame or experience it you kind of it's something people ask you about i think the weirdest part of it is being recognized uh you know, somebody somebody stopping you in the street or being asked for a, a photograph. Mm-hmm. Selfies. Mm-hmm. Selfies. <laughs> selfies. The selfie has killed rock and roll. Yeah, right. Has, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, okay. If you could travel through time, where and when would you go? Um, there's two. I'm in two minds about this. Uh, I would either go back in time and invent a great deal of things and like basically in- invent the modern world. Okay. Or and become a millionaire. Y- millionaire? <laughs> Trillionaire. Tr- yeah, yeah, I mean, come on. Um, <laughs> which I think is too easy. And I think you probably, you know, you, you know, um, I would, I would, uh, in my last days on earth, I would probably like to go into the future mm-hmm. and just see how the shit show ends up. Yeah. Right. See yeah. what the hell is going on yeah. in this crazy world we live in. Mm-hmm. Um, at Flaminka E said, do you think your new album will be similar to your debut success in tone or themes or should we expect a surprise? Um, I think, I think it'll, it'll, you know, I'm, I'm still producing stuff that is, is very much on the, on the same tone and on the same, you know, on the, you know, step that, that makes sense or it makes sense as a, as a step forward. But I'm, there's, I'm eager as well to, to make music that is a bit different. And uh, so I'm still figuring out which, which side, you know, which side the next record will fall upon. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. And did you always play piano or was that, did you? I'm a terrible piano player. <laughs> so just like, I'm So really you're just like faking it in the I wish, no, love video. I, no. <laughs> I am playing it there, but you, my technique is awful. So I've got okay. long, sprawly fingers. So that's like, <laughs> me both, my, yeah. So I'm using <laughs> the wrong fingers in wrong, like style. 
like but so for for recording and stuff fine it's i can play piano but i've yet to trust myself performing piano on stage okay, you know okay so um for writing and recording great easy piece but okay. you know i'm yeah i'm not a great piano player okay no. i think you're great though so hey um favorite movie favorite movie um that's tough that's a tough one i i'm a huge wes anderson fan oh yeah so for a long time the royal tenenbaums and like the life aquatic like mm -hmm. they they have very like it's kind of special place and then like the grand budapest i think is is his is his masterpiece really in a in a lot of ways but um that and my father introduced me to the blues brothers at the age of three nice. the original blues brothers film and i used to watch that over like you know as a three-year-old kid just rewind play you know like you'd watch a Disney film mm -hmm. or whatever. So <laughs> that would that has a special place in my heart. Nice. Um Oh, okay. This is a good one. Joe Mama loves you. That's their that's their name. You. Their at name like that. Please she does. She ask does Hosier love me. about his song Cherry Wine. Proceeds from downloads are donated to Hosier Oh, to international domestic abuse charities. That is true. Okay. And it is a good thing to talk about. World. Um so yes, so we released Cherry Wine. A, few, uh, a couple of months ago now, and as a as a single release, and it's the last song on the album, and the song is, I suppose, the song is about an abusive relationship, and we got some fantastic actors in, involved in the project, a fantastic director, um, Sir Sharon, and got involved. But basically, you know, with the help of my manager, who does some great work with, you know, with kind of protecting children from from domestic abuse, um, we kind of got eighteen different charities across the world with eighteen. Uh, 18 different nations so wow. uh so it was it was tricky and itunes came on board and so if you download cherry wine on itunes as a single and i believe that the link is, is still up there on my uh thingy and if not there's a there's a special place you can you can download it download the single version and all of the proceeds go to a charity in the nation that you download it so oh, if wow. you're if you're in the uk it will go to a uk charity if, if you were in america it goes to you know, inappropriate. That's so, amazing. Yeah, I love yeah. that. It's the, in America, it's the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. I, okay. think I believe it's called. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that. Yeah. I love that. So, um, you know, you you always seem to have, um, you know, strong opinions about things, and um, it's really strong opinions. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you you seem very informed. Um, do I you seem I seem very <laughs> informed. It's a good thing. <laughs> You okay? You are informed, as far as I can tell. I know I do. I mean, I follow no, you on I Instagram seem, no, and Twitter. And I'm like, he knows the stuff. You you're, know, you're correct. I think you're. I think seem is, is generous enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And um, you know, do you think that it's important as a musician or as an actor or something to to do things like that? You know, to make statements um, within you know your realm of work. Yeah. Um, yes and no. Uh, I think. I think. I'm in two minds about that. So you could you could look at it in two different different ways. You could say it's somebody with with a with a certain platform or with a certain audience has some some people might say that you have a responsibility or blah blah blah. I think your your duty is not to, you know. You could say you could say like I think Oscar Wilde said once that a book is never moral or immoral. It's it's either just well written or badly written. Mm -hmm. And so like in in a similar way. All I can do is is, is write music, and all, you know, obviously, personally, I have opinions about stuff, and I do weigh in now and then. You know, if you ask me that opinion, I w I am wary sometimes that I say too much, and mm -hmm. and and you know, people people don't need you know, people have their own lives to live. They don't need somebody else, you know, just uh, standing on a soapbox all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, and people switch off on that. They 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 are turned off by that. Um, so. There's things that I feel, uh, you know, I, f I feel sometimes, you know, I feel have f strong feelings about. Uh, but all I do with the music and all I can do with the music is just reflect my view of the world as honestly as possible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes my view of the world isn't, it's not, it's not all roses, you know what I mean? So, yeah. And I think it's important that we, that we talk about that and, and you know, and, in and engage with that. Absolutely. Well, I think you do a good job, you know. With, you know, because in the music, it's, I feel like you could take things either way, you know, like for Take Me to Church, you know, some people I think really just think it's yeah, a song about going to church. And, yeah, you know what? You know? And they, yeah, exactly. So that's kind of the great thing with music. Yeah. It can be interpreted. Yeah, totally. And, you know? and I mean, at the core of it, like, 
you know that's that's a, that's that's a song about loving like it's a song about just getting down um <laughs> but you know there's there's other stuff there too if you want to read into it too you know um and people people will take from music what they take from it and and every piece of art and every piece of work is finished by the observer it's finished by the person who experiences it you know Absolutely. you you know so um if there's no one there to listen to it, it it's meaningless, you know, yeah. really, I suppose. So. Well, there are a lot of people there to listen to your music. Um, hey. <laughs> okay, if there's a chance to work a non-music related job for a week, uh, what profession would you like to try? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I would love to be a... Um, I always had a fascination with uh, how people's brains work. So I'd love to be like a researching... I'd love to even just sit in a sit and be a fly in the wall in some kind of uh, active uh, research experiment psychological experiment oh wow okay yeah. okay gotcha um what's the creepiest compliment you've ever received i don't <laughs> i don't know uh maybe that i wear aside from the one that i gave you when you came in here thank you yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm still reeling Which, let's not talk about I'm it. i'm still reeling from that i know i'm still he was angry yeah no i'm still just <laughs> i'm just i'm just confused by it um, um okay let's move on i think i think that i wear too many layers of clothing <laughs> possibly i don't know if that's a compliment is it a compliment <laughs> i come from a cold place i'll answer that question now i come from ireland so you wear you wear layers you do so you feel naked without them and that's right and you know. he looks good in layers okay and i look Khaleesi. good in layers that, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here okay this is manuela longoni hi hosier i've always been wondering how you get inspiration to write a song for a movie so i'd like to ask you how you got yours for better love oh we already went over that yeah we kind you, of we, kind we of did we that. touched yeah. on this already you, okay yeah. that's my bad that's cool okay steph stefani wants to know do you prefer performing in larger venues in front of thousands of people or in smaller ones where you can have more of an intimate connection with your fans yeah it's there's two i mean it's two different very different things i started off in kind of smaller clubs and i do miss i miss the energy and i miss the the kind of the closeness and the intimacy of, of a small room even even a club like even a club room so i saw gary clark jr in oh man uh recently he's so good he's just a god <clears throat> up there he is just a thundering god um but it was in the bowery ballroom and i, I just i was so lucky because it was you know i would never get a chance to see him otherwise it was because the, the governor's ball had been cancelled sunday night so he did a makeup show oh, right. real quick in the bowery ballroom which you know he could sell that 10 times over mm -hmm. um and it's just there is an energy and, a, and just a close like heavy energy when when you're in a small room like that um so i i do miss that um and that's not to say there's this there isn't joy in in filling out a big space but there's there's certain rooms it's it's tough there's certain rooms where you can still get a sense of intimacy and closeness and still play to thousands of people mm -hmm. um it's it's rare but there's few there's some venues in the world that, that kind of has that but um i don't know i i miss i miss small clubs i would love you know one day down the line i'd even do a side project just so i could do small clubs again yeah, absolutely. You know? yeah. okay um what is your favorite song to perform live Always had a lot of fun with uh, "To Be Alone," the song called "To Be Alone," which always enjoyed that because mm -hmm. um, we just really just Rory's behind me on the kit, just really hitting it hard, mm -hmm. and you can kind of feel feel that. Nice. Um, and then just randomly, how did you like collect all the different uh, members who play in your band? It, it comes it, so it it it, it kind of comes and goes. It's so Alex Ryan is the oldest. Uh, the oldest playing member in the band. So I met him in college. Mm -hmm. He is fantastic. I met him in my college year. I dropped out after a few months and I kept in touch with him. He joined me initially in the very early days playing drums and then moved to bass. He continued. He was a Trinity scholar. I don't know how he kept it up. So I've been, I've known him a long time. Rory Doyle came on the sessions for the album and then joined the tour eventually. Uh, and he is the heart and soul of it. Like he's just, he's just a joy to tour with. Um, and then cer certain people auditioned. So Alana Henderson um, came down. We were looking for a cello player, and she she auditioned. She's a fantastic, She's amazing. Sing gorgeous yeah. singer-songwriter. Mm -hmm. Really beautiful songs. Um, and she, it's so rare to find somebody who can play cello and and sing confidently. And that's something that she, you know, th which you know, I, was was fantastic. So um, very, we're very lucky to have her. And then I think 
it it changes so sometimes you know we couldn't have somebody who could commit the whole time or could commit fully so you just we just had to audition on the fly now and then so mm-hmm. Rachel Lampa who is this incredible uh again another singer songwriter um she she auditioned or uh, no she just came as a very very as a as a good some people just came as good kind of um recommendation mm-hmm. and you know herself and Ruby Amanfu who has her own album out now so it, it, like some people kind of came and went and then Lorraine Barnes took over for Ruby and and um, Mia Fitzgerald uh, auditioned as well too. No, or no, she didn't. I've, I I had played with her mm. in a few different projects. She's a piano player and guitarist. Um, How they're many all are there all together? There's eight of us on oh stage. Oh my gosh! I think seven of us on That's stage. That's amazing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of us on stage. Okay. All together. Yeah. Well, it makes sense because I mean to make that full of a sound because the record is so full. Yeah. You and know, they're all so. singers, and that that was a hard part. It was making yeah. sure they all could be good singers in their own right and and fill out that kind of sound. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Do you write better when you're in love? No. <laughs> no. No one does. Um, because when you're in love and you're happy, you don't waste your time uh, sitting around thinking about how you feel. You just enjoy the experience of being happy and, and being love, being in love. Very true. So I think when you are, you know, when you're up emotional shit creek, so to speak, with your mouth open, you just, uh, that's when you, you go you want to distract yourself you want to you want to distract yourself at work and you want to you kind of want to process i suppose the the joy maybe the joy that has na- that is now bringing you sorrow so to speak you know what mm-hmm. i mean so and uh, and that's why you can create fantastic love songs when you're really torn apart mm-hmm. you know yeah, but there you go well, I hope you're not in love right now, Hosier, because you've got a record to make. I have a record to make. <laughs> All right. Um, you had the chance, uh, thanks to your talent, to realize your dreams. What's next? What's your ultimate dream? What is my ultimate dream? Um, I don't know. I think, you know, I if I was able to do this and continue doing this, you know, for the foreseeable future, for the unforeseeable future, I would be would be happy, I think. I've I've such a an, uh, I've a fantastic fan base and um I was blown away by the audiences as as we were closing up the tour and I just I just want to make a I just want to make a great record and do it again and I don't know you kind of you kind of ha- you can have a dream and I mean the dream that I had I I'm I'm living so mm-hmm. to speak um but then you're you're always looking for the next thing I think the idea of it it's important to obviously strive towards you know your dreams and your ambition but it's uh so i'm i'm incredibly happy i just want to i just want to keep doing this mm-hmm. yeah yeah absolutely all right well i guess we'll take it to facebook live here we are on the tablet okay so if you guys have questions feel free to ask them um okay would you form a super group i would i would who would um, be in it i oh man um <laughs> I, I can't I would absolutely form a supergroup. We'd have to wait and see, but um, I mean, I'm, I would be eager to collaborate with a lot of people. So I can't, I can't name. Okay. Cause, you know what I mean? I'd have to, because the last two years were so busy as well too. I never get to, I never get to, to form very, very close relationships with with folks, um, and with players apart from the the you know the group that I played with. So uh, look, we'll have to wait and see. But I'm always up for collaborations. I'm always eager to right for duets and whatever else so. absolutely okay cool whoa i'm gonna break this thing um people really want you to visit south america i'll be there he'll be there i'll be there with, when? with bells on um Soon-ish. next tour i hope so yeah next tour um who is your idol who is my idol um as loads, man. I, I I respect Nina Simone a great deal. As I said, a lot of singers. Um, you know, I think Tom Waits got me into songwriting, and I, nice. you know, in a big, big way. Uh, I just I was fascinated by a lot of his music as a teenager, and he's still he's still kind of a big hero in my yeah. books. Yeah, he is like unlike anybody else. That's it. He yeah. really is. Yeah, he just exactly like, mm-hmm. and he's somebody who just has done done his own thing and has created just. When I first heard it, it was music like I didn't think people can can make music like that, you know. But um, yeah, he would be a big idol. 
Oh, you have beautiful man hair. Sarah Chapa wants you to know. Has anyone Thank asked you. you if they can braid it? <laughs> if I let them braid it? Has anyone asked me? Um, yes. Yeah, I, I had it braided <laughs> once. Uh, um, so Lorraine in, in, in the band, we were all waiting for a ferry at like three or four in the morning. <laughs> and she just went on a braiding spree. It was great fun. But she's... she's oh, I saw uh, you with cornrows on yeah, your Instagram. Yeah, so she's from, she's from Jamaica. Like her oh, family's from Jamaica. She's okay. from London. Um, and yeah, we all just sat around together and played with each other's hair. But nice. she braided, she braided all, all the... <laughs> That's awesome. Um, favorite color? <laughs> Always a big f- black. Yes. Black. There you go. Maybe both. Yeah. All right. Seriously. You're on my team. Yeah. I like you. Um. Oh, do you have any tattoos, or would you get a tattoo? I uh, I have a tattoo. Yeah. Um, prison style. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> my friend tattooed one evening he, he, with a needle and a and a really yeah like a needle oh, and a wow. and a piece of string you know oh my god um you're hardcore hosier no it's actually not painful <laughs> really? it's not as hard as i would think i would think the other style is, is different so i've got something a little something that no one's really ever seen okay which, okay. which because i wear too many layers so you <laughs> you'll never see it you'll literally never see it guys sorry about that um do you think you'll stay planted where you're at which is ireland which well not really though or would you consider moving to the u.s um I've considered, I've considered it, uh, not so much like I've considered it. I've always wanted to experience what it would be like to live in, live in a place like New York and just what that, that crazy, just that crazy energy of the place and maybe plug in as well. LA too, it's just has its own, it, it's, it's, it would be a beautiful place to live. I, 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 st- I, I still consider Ireland home, I think. And part of me obviously always will, but, and for the time being, it will be, I'm, you know, but I would, I would consider, and I have considered it, yeah, mm-hmm. in a big way. Okay, well, and I might do that. The future will tell us. Yeah. How old is your dog? He is about, th- I want to say he's about three, three or four years now at this stage. What kind of dog is it? He is a mix, as far as I know, between a border collie and a Springer spaniel. Nice. And he was kind of, we were out in the countryside at one stage, and he was, a, he was a puppy left over of a litter that no one really had ownership of, and he was kind of on his own, and he was kind of, you know. He didn't have he didn't have owners and he was kind of poor guy was kind of on a, uh, out on his own so we we kind of we does he go on tour with you? He doesn't no no, no okay no he's a sweet he's a sweet yeah um, yeah he's that's cool. awesome I he bet you miss your TV. dog he watches <laughs> really I kid you not if I switch on <laughs> I'll show you videos I I remember like Ice Age I think the folks sent me a video of like Ice Age being on 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 TV and he was literally just like oh fixated God. on it like anything that looks like an animal he will look at it cooking shows. Ooh. So you oh, could wow. put on cooking shows Probably or Animal Planet. And mm. like if you just say like doggy on the telly, like on the TV or whatever, he will just like leap towards it. I, I was watching a documentary, a World War II <laughs> documentary, and he was just fixated on it. Like he's he's it's kind of creepy. And then <laughs> there's a video of like Hitler playing with his bloody dog. Oh, and then the, he's just like <laughs> leaping at it, like trying to get oh, at it. Oh, my God. Yeah. I love your dog. I want to yeah. meet your dog. Um, best book you've ever read? Best book you've ever read? Um, my favorite book is is 1984. Um, nice. Yeah. Orwell. Orwell. Yeah, George Orwell. So I've I've read that I've, I've read that a few times, but it's always just how prescient it is and how like how terrifyingly prescient it is. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot still in that book that is kind of you know it's worth reading. I think it if absolutely anyone, yeah, is. Especially worth in today's day and age, it's definitely worth. It's reading. crazy how long for how long ago that book was written. Yeah, to how accurate. Yeah, 1947, like mm-hmm. 1940. You know, it's written in the 1940s, and it's based on you know it, it it draws from Stalin's kind of Red Terror, but it's you know a lot of a lot of the kind of dynamics that is that is talked about. You know, we we see we still still today. You know, mm-hmm. so it's yeah. All right. Well, that's all the time that we have. But thank you so much for hanging out with me today, Hosier. Thank you. And thank you, thank very you guys much. for watching. It's a world famous K Rock.